Today is the 28th of July, and this day in Baptist history, we are reading Eternal Vigilance, the Price of Liberty. Our passage of scripture is Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 1. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. Pastor, why is it the Baptists have the reputation of being anti-Romanists and are so sensitive about religious freedom? That was a sincere question that was asked me as I spoke in a Lutheran high school, and I attempted to answer somewhat as follows. Our Baptist forefathers have battled more than anyone else to secure religious freedom, and we do not intend to lose it. For instance, on July 28, 1768, four Baptist preachers in Orange County, Virginia, were arraigned for merely preaching the gospel without government license. The arrangement and imprisonment of Baptist preachers was as commonplace in Amer early America as it had been in Europe. Tragically, most historians have inadvertently or deliberately overlooked this fact, but we dare not allow that to happen in America today. It is true that, and I quote, there have been manifested at various times and on various occasions a disposition to rewrite the history of that struggle and to rob our Baptist fathers of the peculiar honor which has ever been claimed for them, that of being the foremost, most zealous, and most consistent and unwavering champions of soul liberty." End of quote. Our Baptist progenitors have paid a frightful price for the freedom of religion that America has so long enjoyed. But as the anonymous truism states, eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. The Anabaptists had long experienced the scourge of the Roman Catholic philosophy before the reformers came upon the scene and attempted to claim the religious freedom for themselves. Having through military might obtained that freedom for their own use, the reformers did not want to grant that freedom to the Anabaptists, who had long predated them. Though Great Britain ultimately allowed toleration, it was in our grand republic that religious freedom was fully obtained through the suffering by our Baptist progenitors and then made available to all mankind. It is for this reason that Baptists have been so tenacious in their defense of this freedom, even appearing unnecessarily strident to many other observers. Baptists have long realized that two opposite philosophies continue to exist in the religious world of our day. The Roman Church has never repudiated its position against the separation of church and state. Their stance was clearly set forth in a letter to the bishops of France by Pope Pius X dated February 11, 1906. The letter states, and I quote, that it is necessary to separate church and state is a thesis absolutely false, a most pernicious error, end of quote. It has been observed by some historians that freedom is not assured by any form of government, and I quote, a republic dominated by a pope would be as pliant in the hands of the pope as the monarchies of old were. The seeds are being sown and the end will be reached unless time is taken by the forelock and the calamities averted. This is a lesson republics must learn, and the sooner the better. The free government of the United States is of all governments the most liable to this danger, and no one knows it better than the Pope." End of quote. Thus Baptists have watched with a wary eye any influence that would endanger our hard-won liberty. In 1939, when President Franklin D. Roosevelt sent Joseph Kennedy to represent America at the coronation of the Pope, Baptists of America led in the protest. Again, in 1939, when President Roosevelt appointed Myron C. Taylor as a representative to the Vatican, it was the Baptists who protested the loudest. At that time, Dr. George W. Truett spoke for the Baptists in general when he said, and I quote, are our Baptist people exclusive and intolerant and illiberal when the very foundation of their church policy is liberty, not only for themselves, but alike for everybody else? In all their unwavering advocacy of soul freedom in its completest measure and the destiny determining principle of the separation of church and state, 
our Baptist people do not have flock or stain upon the fair page of their history. End of quote. In 1951, the Baptists led the way again in lobbying the, to defeat proposed legislation that would have appointed a full ambassador to the Vatican. Fundamentalist Bible-believing Baptists believe that the only way of salvation is by repenting of sin and trusting Jesus Christ as personal Savior. However, Baptists uphold the right and defend the privilege of all to worship as they choose. Baptists protect the personal rights of their Catholic neighbors, but protest the form of religious government that Rome imposed upon our Baptist forefathers in the past and would surely foist upon us again were that possible. May the Lord keep us ever vigilant that soul liberty be preserved. To God be the glory.